Right, hello everyone. I've been on the channel a while now. It's working, I just need to take my hand off. Oh. And I thought it was time I told you all a bit more about myself. So, without further ado, it's time for my Meet the Presenter. They call me the Tony Hawk of the cycling world. Voila! <laughs> Michael, how would you fit in this? So, how tall are you actually? Oh right, well, it's really nice of you to ask this one actually, because you know what, I just don't get asked it enough. I don't really get asked it often to be honest, and I love talking about my height. Anyone who wants to know how tall I am, I'm 2 metres 4, so that's 6 foot 8 inches. Actually, it's 6 foot 8 and a half, if you're going to be really precise and that extra half is rather important, if you ask me. And I mean, I didn't really do anything to kind of earn my height. I feel like I didn't do any work for it, it just kind of happened. I think I ate a lot of porridge and Weetabix. My mum often says, I used to have two dinners. I used to have a dinner when I came home from school, and I used to have a dinner at dinner time, and then at lunch time, I'd literally have a French baguette, a whole French baguette cut in half, and that would be my lunch. I think it got me maybe, more friends than I would have done normally in the bunch. People were always offering me beers to ride behind me. So that was nice. I could always kind of slot in where I wanted to in a race. Although it did come with its disadvantages. I often hit a few low-flying branches. You know, people are always pointing out the potholes, but they're never pointing out what's above. I never really noticed any major disadvantages to my cycling. If anything, I think, uh, I think it added to it, really. Uh, I, loved, I loved being a tall cyclist. How did it all start? So my uncle Roger got me into cycling actually. He uh, used to race semi-professionally on the continent and he was a massive, massive hero of mine. I always really looked up to him. And I guess he kind of took me out on my bike with my dad and the rest of my uncles. And I guess that was definitely the starting point that was kind of the spark so that began the, the flame of my love for cycling really. And I never really looked back from then. I started racing when I was 16. My dad used to drop me off with a legend of a guy called John Barkley who used to take juniors over to Belgium to race. So my dad would pay him 50 quid and that would cover my race entry and the hostel for the night. So we'd race on Saturday and Sunday and you just kind of off you went, you know, give it your best and see what happens. There was no sort of uh, real uh, tactics or anything like that. It was just racing for the, for the heck of it, uh, eating fritz and ice cream afterwards. And then after I finished school, I moved to Belgium, lived in Belgium for five years, uh, raced for teams there. Um, and yeah, it was the same thing really. It's just the sense of adventure, I think, was the main thing for me. Cycling was just this kind of vehicle which allowed you to do so many things and go to different places, meet so many new people. And I think that was one of the reasons I fell in love with it so much as well. So yeah, Belgium definitely featured heavily though. Any interesting old bikes in the garage? Yeah, so I am lucky enough to have a couple of my own personal bikes which I kept from my career. Um, mainly from my national championship win. Got the first one, which was the bike that Aqua Blue Sport kind of commissioned and uh, customised for me after I won the championship. So that was the bike I raced on throughout the rest of the season. I oh, was super lucky to have that one, I loved that. It was great, fully customised everything. Everything was Irish, so it was brilliant. Um, just, I wanted to get the Irish flag on as much of my kit as possible. So yeah, you had to get the bike. You had to get the bike for the Irish as well. And also this one for the, the UCI World Championships in Innsbruck, that was another special one. And I was lucky enough to kind of design it myself. And I decided to go for my name just here and a bit of a tribute to the no-go tour on the, on the rear stay. And the two-tone kind of green and purple colour. So both pretty special bikes. I'm never getting rid of the, either of these. They're custom made, custom sized, made by Condor. And they're both Condor Legeros. And uh, yeah, I'll be keeping these forever. I think this will be the one I always kind of cruise about and ride on, and I think the other one will be the one I kind of frame and like give it pride or place somewhere one day. But for the moment, it's wrapped in cotton wool. I also nearly lost it on uh, my adventure with Larry Warbass in the French and Italian Alps because um, we finished the day, seven and a half hours in the saddle. We're knackered, hungry. We got into a hostel, and I remember the hostel owner saying they put it in the garage for us, and we kind of just forgot about that. Got up the next morning, it was still outside the hostel, just in plain sight on the road, not locked or anything. I nearly had a heart attack. So 
we nearly lost each other, but thankfully we're still together and you won't be going anywhere soon, I tell you. What was your best moment in racing? I think one of my best racing moments would have been taking part in the Giro d'Italia and the Vuelta Espana. For me, I think the Grand Tours are just the highlight and kind of like just that thing you want to do when you're a kid. You want to ride a Grand Tour and it just seems like such an impossible thing to do and I was pinching myself at every moment that I was racing both of those races. You came last, Connor. Yeah, 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 I did, yeah. But I was happy just to finish. Yeah. But yeah, you came last. Okay, yeah, but seriously, I think racing a Grand Tour for me is just that sense of adventure. It's three weeks long. You're staying in a different hotel every day. It's just absolutely bonkers. The whole experience is bonkers. And unless you're sort of the guy that wins it, I think for everyone else, the experience of it is more of an adventure than a real like high performance race. That's what it felt like to me anyway. Um, and I'd say my favorite Grand Tour was probably the Vuelta Espana, mainly because it was my first one. So it was just such a mental experience. The sheer pace of every stage start, the suffering, it was like nothing I'd ever experienced before. And also our bus burnt down. Yeah, yeah, our bus burnt down. It happened, I think it happened on the second week or maybe the third week, but I can't remember. I just remember waking up in the morning and getting a text on the group WhatsApp. The bus has burnt down. And I thought it was just a soigneur um, making jokes, but the bus had actually burnt down. Someone had burnt it down. I think it was an arsonist. Um, so that kind of turns the whole race into a new experience as well, because it, we kind of switched from really trying to do well to just winging it, basically, just trying to get to the end and do the best possible result we could. And there was less pressure because we'd lost a load of our equipment. We'd lost quite a lot of our nutrition. We'd lost our bus. And um, so we're on this old school bus that the World Tour organizers gave us. And from then on, it was just, it just, I was suffering so much, but it still just turned into more of a sort of, let's get to the finish and all muck in together. And we had a great team spirit and I would always remember it, I think, just getting to Madrid and just thinking of what we'd all been through. Oh, I can't describe it really. It's hard to put into words, but special moments as well. Funny, really, if you think it all kick-started from the fact that someone tried to set fire to us, but life can move in funny ways. <laughs> Any interests other than cycling? Any interests other than cycling? Well, I love skateboarding. I think I'm quite good at it. They call me the Tony Hawk of the cycling world. Voila! This is, this is my film. Yeah. Brother-in-law. Nigel. I can play the ukulele. Um, I love coffee. Anything coffee, I love. Love my chickens. I love chickens. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Here we go. Hold on now, hold on. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, Jesus Christ, that was a rat. Oh, f <laughs> I like growing, like growing basil, and I love uh, being kind of green fingered. Three basil plants growing very well, and I've also got some tomatoes growing here. And um, I'm not actually sure what this arrangement's called. Uh, it's kind of special lighting, it makes the plants go quicker. Also, I love the sea. I just love the sea. Anything to do with water, I'm straight into it. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Right, you're probably all wondering why I was wearing a wetsuit at the start of this video. Well, the reason is, because I'm an avid swimmer. I love wild swimming, and any opportunity I get to get in the water, I take it. So, as you can see, GTN have sent me a wetsuit. So I'm hoping that's a sign of things to come. It might be a, a duel between GTN, we'll see. But anyway, I'm on my favorite wild swimming spot here on the Copper Coast of South East Ireland in County Waterford. And as you can see, absolutely stunning. And I feel so lucky to be in this area. Now, now I'm free from racing, I need to get to do more of things like this. So I'm just gonna take you on a little wild swim with myself now. else is there. Yeah, I think one of the reasons I stopped racing was just for a bit more balance and a happy, quiet Yay. home life. Take the bins out, Connor, will ya? They're overflowing. Take the bins out, Connor. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
what are your most memorable jerseys? Memorable jerseys? Okay, let me think. Right, okay. Top of the list, without a doubt, has got to be the jersey you win when you win a national championship. So this was my Irish road race national championship jersey, which you get awarded upon, upon winning the race. And this was a huge, huge honour for me. I never actually thought I'd win the Irish national championships. It's such a hard one to win. My other national championship jerseys of the first one, so this is Aqua Blue, this is the, the first one I wore after winning it. So I wore that for the rest of the season. And also in our little adventure in the mountains with my friend Larry, I wore that 1400 kilometers around the Alps. And I think this was maybe my favorite design of the two. I just liked the fact that it was a little bit understated, just white mini shamrocks on the sleeves and I liked the gold on it, the gold and the green. I really loved that. And then it went to next year's jersey, which was my Israel Cycling Academy jersey. The design changed a little bit, more of a kind of block green with the white shamrock. This jersey is special to me because I wore it through the Giro. So it was a huge honor to be a national champion in a Grand Tour. That was like a massive, massive bucket list. That's got to be the highlight of my racing career, I think, being national champion and having that honor of being the champion for the rest of the year. So yeah, good memories. But other jerseys I've got to note are this one. So this is the special edition jersey, which we wore in the Vuelta for Aqua Blue Sport. So they changed it to white on the top just for the, the Vuelta Espana. Um, and I was very grateful for that actually, because it was so hot. I was grateful to have a white jersey. And it was just a simple design. I just liked the fact that it was plain white with the, the gold. It wasn't too busy on the jersey. I think jerseys can get over busy with sponsors. And I think that was why the aqua blue jersey was just so good looking. Um, but my dad's actually got the normal jersey and a lot of my other jerseys. So you'll have to kind of catch up with him to see where he's gone with them. I think he rides around with them every day on his local roads. I think he puts a different one on every day. He's got a massive collection of them now. One more jersey then. This is my King of the Mountains. The only ever King of the Mountains jersey I won at the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. And I know what you're going to say, it's only a one day race. And can you be King of the Mountain of a one day race? Well, I'm going to say you can. And here's the jersey to prove it. Navy blue polka dots. I, I kind of wore a lot of King of the Mountains jerseys, but I never actually won them. You know, I, I, I wore them for a bit and I never managed to take it to the end. So I'm proud of this one. What's your favorite place to ride a bike? My favourite place to ride my bike has got to be County Waterford in the southeast of Ireland. I spent many, many training days around here, getting in the miles, getting ready for races. But these days, I just love riding my bike here, mainly on my gravel bike, actually. There's just so many kind of gravel roads around here and real like back roads um, that I keep exploring and finding new roads all the time that uh, you just can't go wrong and do a different ride every day. You've got the coast over there. That's kind of my back garden, really all around here, all these roads. I love it. I get, I, get a bit, I get a bit homesick actually when I'm away. Especially on a day like today, you can't beat it really, can you? So, did you like to be in breakaways? Breakaways, yeah. I kind of decided that breakaways were the best option for me really. I felt that like I needed a head start on any race. I think my favorite breakaway has got to be at the World Championships and I managed to get in the breakaway three times in Richmond, Innsbruck, and where else was there? There's another one somewhere. I can't remember. Norway, Bergen, Bergen. Got in the breakaway there. But I think anyway, my favorite reason for getting in the break in the World Championships is the fact there is a massive atmosphere. Everyone's been there from the start of the morning at the side of the road, and it's just bonkers. I remember it vividly in Richmond because it was a small fight to get in the break, but it kind of went pretty easy there, if I'm honest. It was kind of like uh, the bigger nations holding back and they let kind of us lesser mortals up the road <laughs> to have a bit of fun. But um, we got in the break and we had a bit of a time to ride the circuit and then we hit the circuit. We hit the cobble climb for the first time and it was just like nothing I'd ever experienced before in a race. It was like a wall of noise and it literally felt like I was getting thrown off my bike. The noise hit me so hard. And oh, just an unbelievable experience. I soaked it up every single lap. I just soaked up the atmosphere and enjoyed, enjoyed my time in the break there. I loved being in the breakaway. I'll miss that, I will miss that. What was your worst crash? I never had too many crashes actually, because to be honest, I would say I had expert bike handling skills. But 
If I was to mention one crash in particular, it's got to be, I think it was stage six or seven of Tour of South Korea. And it was a bit of a bonkers race in itself, but this one stage in particular, there was a pipe on the road where they'd sort of relay this pipe, but it hadn't filled in the trench. So it was basically a massive trench on the, the midpoint of the hairpin. And someone hit it, crashed, someone else hit it, crashed. And before you knew it, it was, the whole group was crashing basically. So I came around this hairpin at full pelt, avoiding people on the floor, avoiding people, avoiding people. And then I saw this barrier coming at me and I was like, oh no, this is gonna, this is gonna be a bad one. I had no time to stop. I saw the barrier coming really fast at me and then I just made a split decision. I remember vividly in my head making this decision to just abandon my bike and just dive. So I just dived off my bike. I cleared the barrier, so I didn't hit that, so no pain. And then I just put my hands on my head and I just remember feeling all the branches of the trees just going <laughs> and I was like I was in a washing machine going like this. I was like, oh no, this is going to be bad. I'm going to really hurt myself. And then, then the, the, the spinning all stopped. I came round on the floor and I checked myself, I was like, I'm fine. I'm a few scratches, but I'm okay. Nothing's broken. I got up and, and uh, I couldn't find my bike. So I abandoned the bike, went, climbed back up, got my spare bike, carried on. And the mechanic had to go down and find the bike for me. Apparently it was like 50 meters further down. So it's funny to laugh at it, but I was very, very lucky. And I think it showed me how dangerous racing can actually be. What was your toughest moment in cycling? To pick one particularly grim moment, it was at the 2017 Vuelta and stage 11. I remember feeling so tired and grumpy in the morning. It was pissing down with rain, like abysmal rain. There was trenches of water just flowing down the road. And I remember really finding it hard to motivate myself. I was at the back of the bunch in the neutral zone, the back of the bunch when the race started and I was getting dropped. There was groups splitting all the time. The wind was so strong. There was like groups splitting coming back and I was just suffering, but I was just so grumpy. And then I remember thinking, no, like, come on, Connor. There's that voice in your head. It was like, come on, Connor, motivate yourself here. Take your rain jacket off because for one, it's flapping in the wind and just slowing you down. It's like a bin bag around you. So I took that off, put it in my pocket. I bucked my ideas up and I did one attack <laughs> in my kind of grumpy state and made the breakaway. And that was it. <laughs> I went from being super grumpy to really happy that I'd made it into the breakaway for the first ever time in a grand tour. It was like I was on high on life. And I completely forgot to eat, completely forgot to drink. I was just in the break. I was kind of on top of the world. Nothing mattered anymore. And I also completely forgot that the stage finished up two horse category climbs. So pretty much the worst climbs of the race, actually. So my DS quickly reminded me of this. <laughs> and told me to ease up, but uh, I had no choice really. I had to go as hard as I could. I was, I was, in, I was in it for the ride. Um, so I got dropped on the first climb. And I could see the bunch all behind me with all like, you know, the big GC riders riding. And I got caught by them pretty quick. I just watched them pass me. And then, uh, you know, everyone else started passing me. And then I realized that we still had like 70 or 80K to go with these massive climbs and it was still raining. And I realized like half the day was done. I had half, if not more of the day to go. So I kind of knuckled down, realized I was very hungry as well. I got caught by the Gruppetto and nearly dropped by the Gruppetto. And I just spent the rest of the day suffering, trying to not to get dropped by Group Petter, just yo-yoing out the back, in and out, in and out. Oh, it was absolute torture. I think a can of Coke saved me, just drinking cans of Coke. Um, and I, I don't know how I got through it. I think your teammates trying to rally around you, pull you through, but yeah. <laughs> S snakes? There's no snakes, no. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope, uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Bit of a trip down memory lane for me. And uh, fun to share it all with you. So thanks for watching. And let me know in the comments below. If you've got any questions, I'll try and answer as many as I can. And I guess I'd just like to say a thank you as well to everyone who supports me in my career. Because I'd never have, I'd never have done it without you. So yeah. Hopefully share a few more adventures on GCN with you all too. So thanks everyone. I'll try not to uh, swallow too much seawater here. <laughs> See ya. Bye bye.
Ba-da-ba-da-boo, ba-da-boo, 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 ba-da-boo.